Would you like to have a better understanding of God's Word? Do you know how to study the Bible for yourself? The ultimate purpose in studying the Bible should be to develop a relationship with the true and living God and His Son Jesus Christ, that He may reveal to you what His will is for your life. Because man puts his own interpretation upon the Scriptures, deadly doctrines have come in, corrupting the churches, leading thousands astray. There are certain rules to be followed in order to come to a correct understanding of the Scriptures. You do not have to have a theological degree or to rely upon a man to help you understand God's Word. I'd like to share these rules with you today so that you can come to a correct understanding of the Word of God for yourself. I did not originate these rules, but I believe that they are a gift from God. In the early 1800s, a New England farmer by the name of William Miller set out to study God's Word. God used this man to bring about a revival of Bible study, especially of the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. God enlightened William Miller's mind and gave him a system to follow for correct biblical interpretation. Using William Miller's rules of interpretation, a man by the name of Josiah Litch predicted in 1838 that the Ottoman Empire would fall on August 11, 1840. This prophecy was fulfilled to the very letter and many infidels were converted to the truth as a result. If Miller's rules are well studied in connection to the scripture references, you will be benefited by them and the Word of God will open to your understanding. These rules are simple but intelligent and very important for a correct interpretation of the Word of God. Rule number one, every word must have its proper bearing on the subject presented in the Bible. See Matthew 5.18. Rule number two, all scripture is necessary and may be understood by diligent application and study. See 1 Timothy 3.15-17. Rule number three, Nothing revealed in the scripture can or will be hid from those who ask in faith, nothing wavering. See James 1, 5-6. Rule number four. To understand doctrine, bring all the scriptures together on the subject you wish to know. Then let every word have its proper influence, and if you can form your theory without contradiction, you cannot be in error. See 2 Peter 1, 19-20. Rule number five, scripture must be its own expositor, since it is a rule of itself. If I depend on a teacher to expound it to me, and he should guess at its meaning, or desire to have it so on account of his sectarian creed, or to be thought wise, then his guessing, desire, creed, or wisdom is my rule, not the Bible. See Jeremiah 17 verse five. Rule number six, God has revealed things to come by visions and figures and parables, and in this way the same things are oftentimes revealed again and again by different visions or in different figures or parables. If you wish to understand them, you must combine them all in one. There are several references for this rule, but for example you can see Psalm 89:19, Habakkuk 2:2. Genesis 41, 1-32 Rule number 7 Visions are always mentioned as such. See 2 Corinthians 12, 1 Rule number 8 Figures always have a figurative meaning and are used much in prophecy to represent future things, times, events. Such as mountains meaning governments, Beasts meaning kingdoms, waters meaning people, lamps meaning word of God, day meaning year, 
see the different references such as Daniel 2.35 and verse 44, or Ezekiel 4.6. Rule number nine. Parables are used as comparison to illustrate subjects and must be explained in the same way as figures by the subject and Bible. See Mark 4.13. Rule number 10. Figures sometimes have two or more different significations, as day is used in a figurative sense to represent three different periods of time. Indefinite, definite, a day for a year, day for a thousand years. If you put the right construction on it, it will harmonize with the Bible and make good sense. Otherwise, it will not. See Ecclesiastes 7.14, Ezekiel 4.6, and 2 Peter 3.8. Rule number 11. How to know when a word is used figuratively. If it makes good sense as it stands and does no violence to the simple laws of nature, then it must be understood literally, if not figuratively. See Revelation 12, 1 and 2 and Revelation 17, 3 to 7. Rule number 12. To learn the true meaning of figures, trace your figurative word through the Bible and where you find it explained, put it on your figure, and if it makes good sense, you need look no further. If not, look again. Rule number 13. To know whether we have the true historical event for the fulfillment of a prophecy. If you find every word of the prophecy, after the figures are understood, is literally fulfilled, then you may know that your history is the true event. But if one word lacks a fulfillment, then you must look for another event or wait its future development. For God takes care that history and prophecy doth agree, so that the true believing children of God may never be ashamed. See Psalm 21 verse 5, Isaiah 14, 17 to 19, Acts 3:18. Rule number 14. The most important rule of all is that you must have faith. It must be a faith that requires a sacrifice, and if tried, would give up the dearest object on earth, the world and all its desires, character, living, occupation, friends, home, comforts, and worldly honors. If any of these should hinder our believing any part of God's word, it would show our faith to be vain. Nor can we ever believe so long as one of these motives lies lurking in our hearts. We must believe that God will never forfeit His Word. And we can have confidence that he that takes notice of the sparrow and numbers the hairs of our head will guard the translation of his own Word and throw a barrier around it and prevent those who sincerely trust in God and put implicit confidence in His Word from erring far from the truth, though they may not understand Hebrew or Greek. With a correct understanding of how to study God's Word and a sincere desire to do His will, Jesus promised that you will know of the doctrine. I pray that as you study these rules and apply them to your study of God's Word, that you will receive a great blessing.